Hey guys, uh, Dr. Sean here. I'd like to review a couple studies that uh, I recently took a look at and became aware of, and I, I think they're interesting, so I wanted to try to share it with my followers and share this data and the conclusions that came from these studies, so I think they'll be helpful for you. So the topic of these studies deals with uh, vitamin D, which is an uh, incredibly important uh, vitamin, actually is better thought of or regarded as a hormone than a vitamin. <clears throat> but in this particular study that, uh, and I'm just going to actually cover two studies, so I'm going to put this up here so you can screenshot these particular studies. And the second uh, reference here is actually an article to the first study. And for those of you who may not want to read the study or don't feel comfortable looking at details from a study, articles are a pretty interesting way to get that information, provided that it's well written. And I think this one's a pretty decent one, so you can take a look at that. So uh, in this particular study, what they looked at was low levels of vitamin D. And when they found individuals that had low levels, and they were actually looking at levels less than 20, which is a pretty low level, there is twice the risk for developing COVID. So that is a pretty interesting finding. And they looked at 489 patients, which wasn't a huge uh, number of patients, but nonetheless, uh, twice the risk is, is a pretty interesting uh, conclusion to uh, warrant, I think, consideration whether we should be treating low levels of D. And I absolutely think uh, we should be treating low levels of vitamin D because it not only puts you at risk for COVID, as this study shows, and other studies have shown the same thing, but it decreases your immunity. We've seen that in numerous studies. Now, it's a little bit controversial because I know in the news, COVID has been used as a treatment, and I think vitamin D is better regarded as a preventive, meaning that we should sustain high levels or you know decent, normal levels of vitamin D to prevent getting COVID in the first place, rather than waiting for uh, its use as a treatment of COVID or some other uh, infection that we may develop. So make sure if you don't know what your vitamin D levels are, make sure you find out what they are and uh, properly maintain them. And I wanna discuss a little bit, uh, which is a nice segue, uh, different forms of vitamin D. So in the second study, uh, it looked at the differences between, uh, which is actually the third listing here, the differences uh, between exogenous and endogenous vitamin D. So I think that's important to understand, and let me explain that to you. So exo means outside uh, brought in. So exogenous sources of vitamin D, supplementation, and then food. Oftentimes food is fortified and you bring that food in and if you're getting your vitamin D levels that way from outside the body brought in, then in this uh, particular study, compared to endogenous production of vitamin D, just, which is where your body makes vitamin D, if you may, may not be aware that your body does in fact make vitamin D, and it makes it from healthy fats, so you want to make sure that you have a good supply of healthy animal fats and the healthiest animals possible uh, to consume and use them to make vitamin D and these other uh, other very important hormones. So in this second, uh, second study that I want to discuss, it was found that um, uh, if you get your sources from endogenous, meaning uh, your own body's production of vitamin D, it's uh, helpful for producing mature osteoblasts, meaning it increases cell uh, bone density. And compared to vitamin D sources that come um, out from outside the body, it was shown to cause demineralization. So it, was, it wasn't just that it was better. Uh, vitamin D from outside, outside sources actually in this particular study uh, contributed to the demineralization of uh, bone density. So um, this hits home a point that, that I think is really important. And I, and I use it as a guiding source. I mean, nature is best. Nature is awesome. So you want nature to create these fantastic substances, your own body to create them rather than bringing it in. Now, it gets a little confusing because I think, you know, they, they didn't go into really good detail about these, these sources of food. And keep in mind, that obviously food sources differ. So if you're eating 
getting your vitamin D from like say processed cereals, you know, that are fortified with vitamin D, uh, or from uh, low fat uh, skim milk, ultra pasteurized uh, skim milk that's fortified with vitamin D, and you're relying on those sources for supplementation of your vitamin D, which un unfortunately a lot of people do because it's part of marketing. Then your capacity for, you know, qualitatively improving your bone density is going to, and your vitamin D and, and, uh, and benefiting from vitamin D is going to be uh, significantly uh, less than if you use your um, maybe more uh, naturally rich vitamin D from animal products such as um, uh, liver or uh, cod liver oil or some, some other uh, animal products that uh, organ meat that have higher levels of vitamin D. So I think it makes a big difference, the type of food that you're looking to, to consume um, for the vitamin D levels. But nothing compares, even, even vitamin, naturally rich vitamin D sources like liver. I think you really would be far better off getting your vitamin D synthesized from your body from the sun. So the sun, the action of the sun actually on your cells, on your skin, produce glorious, fantastic vitamin D, and you don't ever have to worry about accumulating toxic levels, vitamin toxicosis or elevated levels, too, too elevated levels of vitamin D, which is a fat-soluble molecule and it, and it can accumulate in your body. But, you know, I think it's overrated, this concern. I, you know, just, have you ever heard of anybody uh, become vitamin D toxic? I mean, anecdotally, it's reported in the news, but uh, uh, in the med well, I should say in the medical literature, I don't think it's reported in the news. So I think this uh, concern is probably overrated. And if you get your vitamin D principally from the sunshine, you never have to worry about becoming vitamin D toxic. So uh, go out in the sun and uh, a couple uh, a few points about the sun that I think is worth taking. First of all, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 we would all be dead without the sun. And we are naturally adapted because the sun uh, preceded our existence as, as humans. So we are naturally adapted to be tolerant of the sun and more importantly to exploit and leverage the advantages of the sun. So that's, that's an important point to realize because today I, th I think the sun is, is being demonized. We're told to avoid it. Uh, we're told to wear sunscreen and all these chemicals, which in and of themselves have associated risks. I mean, finding you know, the state of Hawaii is banned um, sunscreen because it's, it's influence, it's destructive nature on the living coral. Well, yeah, I don't think we're paying enough attention to, you know, the destructive nature of uh, some of these sunscreens on our skin. So uh, for God's sakes, if you're absolutely terrified of sun, put a white shirt on, you know, rather than put chemical you know, chemicals on your body. Uh, and, and then get out in the sun and tolerate it a little bit. When you feel like you're, you're burning something, you get in some shade or put, put, uh, put, put a, uh, a, a white, you know, some white cloth on your, you know, long sleeve your shirt to cover up. That would be far preferable than to uh, use uh, chemical sprays. The other thing I like to point out is that when you go out in the sun, I, I think it's better if you are moving. I mean, we, you know, we're hunter-gatherers, and we just did a lot of walking. We did a lot of, you know, moving around. We were itinerant. We, we had things to do. So I just don't think a lot of our existence was lounging around on towels and sandy beaches uh, or a cheese lounge chairs. I think we did a lot of walking, and I think that sun uh, hitting our skin when we were walking uh, with the max, you know, a, uh, I should say, optimized level of perfusion. Blood flow is optimized when you walk. It picks it up, not excessively for a long period, of, you know, at a high excessive rate, like from high intensity, uh, and not as elevated as maybe from cardio or aerobic activity, like from jogging. It's a beautiful a state of existence where your blood flow is optimized. So get out and walk. Uh, wear some shorts, let that sun hit your body at that, just that perfect blood flow at that time, I think, brings it all together and provides some protection. Uh, melanin is a, is a wonderful skin content uh, pigment that is uh, part of your skin it, that helps you be protected against uh, the dangers of ultraviolet light. So uh, it's, it's an important uh, 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 substance that you want to get, and it's associated with less cancer. So. 
in many cases, people that get skin cancers are people that are eating a high processed diet, eating a lot of uh, uh, processed foods, eating a lot of carbohydrates. Uh, they have a lot of reactive oxygen species and advanced glycated uh, end products. These these products of metabolism that is that are associated with more of an inflammatory state. So we eat a good, healthy, high fat, low carbohydrate diet. Uh, be ketogenic. Uh, ideally, I think uh, you should consider trying uh, a carnivore diet, which I do, which I think creates a more favorable. Uh, physiological state to, to absorb the sun and is more beneficial. The last point I'd like to make is about infrared. So infrared rays are part of the uh, light spectrum to come out of the sun and infrared, infrared rays have benefit to us. They're, they're really a beneficial part of life uh, that we should be exposed to but I think my preference for sure is going to be from natural infrared rays that come from the sunshine and not man-made infrared lighting. So a lot of people um, have preferences for uh, infrared saunas and while they can heat you up faster in a shorter period of time, you don't have to have as much heat, I don't like that newfangled approach to uh, technology. I'd much rather get my infrared rays uh, coming from uh, from the sun and one of the problems and concerns I had for, for those infrared rays if you've ever used an IR sauna is that they're very deep penetrating so these infrared rays penetrate much deeper than the infrared rays that come from the sun and I think this is potentially problematic and I've not seen studies to take a look at this but I don't think we have defensive measures and we're not adapted to that much more deeper penetration that you're getting from IR, infrared technology, lamps and, and lighting and saunas and, and the like, than, than what we're accustomed and, and, and actually adapted to experiencing. So my recommendation is to use a dry finish sauna. And most of the studies have been on dry finish saunas, so these are the ones that, that, uh, uh, that involve larger numbers of people over a longer period of time. So I think uh, my recommendation to my followers is to stay traditional, uh, use the sunshine, stay as traditional as possible when it comes to heat, using a dry finish source of sauna rather than the infrared technology. And uh, I know a lot of people um, are talking about using infrared technology to uh, infrared lighting to boost testosterone production by exposing uh, their, their gonads, male gonads, to test uh, to infrared technology, and uh, I think that's equally dangerous. You know, you, you, you're again exposing this deep IR penetration uh, to save some time and and it, and, it, and use this uh, IR technology. It just, uh, I have a lot of concern about this. So my recommendation is, uh, uh, if you want to explore the benefits of infrared technology to enhance testosterone production, which, by studies, uh, appear significant, you'd be far better off, healthier. Uh, to do that naturally, letting sunshine uh, expose, hit, hit your skin, in particular in this, in this, in the case of testosterone, on your 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 gonads, male gonads, uh, directly from sunshine. So those are my points on uh, infrared technology, saunas. Some people have asked me about those points, so I wanted to get those out in a short video, and about vitamin D. If you like this video, give it a like. And uh, I'd love to hear your comments, love to have your questions. Uh, my passion is uh, health and performance optimization. So uh, thank you for following me and feel free, or I'd really like it if you would share this video with other people so they can become aware of this, uh, uh, this content. I look at things differently than a lot of other doctors. I uh, really purpose to try to figure out the most natural and safest strategies for optimizing yourself and optimizing your health. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, consider subscribing if you uh, are seeing this on YouTube or consider following me if, you're, if you've gotten this through uh, Instagram or Twitter. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.